I am Ron Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm presenting some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in literature and cultural studies. This particular installment is the second in a series on Book 4 of John Milton's Paradise Lost. In an earlier webcast, I commented on Satan's entry into the Garden of Eden at the beginning of Book 4. Here, I'll turn to the description of Adam and Eve in Paradise, as we see them in their glorious innocence before the fall. Interestingly, and I think significantly, Milton first introduces us, the readers, to Adam and Eve through the eyes of Satan. And I'll read a few lines from that section. A whole day's journey, high but wide remote from this Assyrian garden, where the fiend saw undelighted all delight, all kind of living creatures, new to sight and strange, two of far nobler shape, erect and tall, godlike erect, with native honor clad, in naked majesty seemed lords of all. And worthy seemed, for in their looks divine the image of their glorious maker shone. Truth, wisdom, sanctitude severe and pure, severe, but in true filial freedom placed, whence true authority in men, though both not equal, as their sex not equal seemed, for contemplation he and valor formed, for softness she and sweet attractive grace, he for God only, she for God in him. His fair large front and eyes sublime declared absolute rule, and hyacinthine locks round from his parted forelock manly hung, clustering, but not beneath his shoulders broad. She, as a veil down to the slender waist, her unadorned golden tresses wore, disheveled but in wanton ringlets waved as the vine curls her tendrils, which implied subjection, but required with gentle sway, and by her yielded, by him best received, yielded with coy submission, modest pride, and sweet reluctance, amorous delay. I hope you'll notice and agree with me that this is more than just a little bit sexist, his representation of the relationship between Adam and Eve. He was formed for contemplation and valor. She was formed for softness and sweet, attractive grace. He was formed for God only. She was formed for God in him. Adam has God. She has Adam. Adam is her God. Her access to God, her relationship to God, is filtered through Adam. His fair large front and eye sublime declared absolute rule, and his hyacinthine locks round from his parted forelock hung manly, clustering, but not beneath his shoulders broad. She had longer hair, down to the slender waist. She wore it disheveled, but in wanton ringlets it waved as the vine curls her tendrils, which implied subjection, but required with gentle sway. In teaching literature, one is always going to encounter sexist texts and representations. They're part of our history. They become part of our present as we continue to teach them and read them, make movies about them, talk about them, and and uh, hear about them in church, repeated and recovered for generation after generation. Where does these ideas come from? Where does Milton get the idea that Adam is formed for God and Eve is formed for Adam and that Adam is for contemplation and valor formed and Eve is formed for submission and softness and attractive grace? Where does he get that idea? And where do we get it? Probably from Genesis, where we have the description of the creation in one of the versions, Eve being formed from Adam's rib. And in another verse, Adam and Eve being created directly together simultaneously from the dust in God's image. Even there, we have a contradictory representation of this creation. Biblical textual scholars understand the discrepancy between the two different accounts of the creation of Adam and Eve in 
chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Genesis as a result of different sets of authors writing at different times. The account of creation found in Genesis chapter 1 they call the J narrative. J is for Yahweh or Jehovah. This is the creation narrative in which Adam and Eve are created from the dust at the same time in God's image. In chapter 2 of Genesis, we read the E narrative. E stands for Elohim. These writers call God Elohim, or sometimes Yahweh Elohim, never simply Yahweh or Jehovah. This is the earlier text, probably dating from the 9th century before the Common Era. The E authors are responsible for the creation account in Genesis chapter 2, in which Eve is created from Adam's rib. How many of you have you heard the description in which Adam, God puts him to sleep and pulls up a rib from his side and creates Eve from the rib? A psychoanalytic reading of the creation narrative in which Eve is created from Adam's rib will suggest that Eve is being projected as a token of Adam's desire. Adam doesn't want a companion who's just as smart as he is, just as strong as he is, who has autonomy and individualism on her own account. Instead, she's created from his rib. She's always going to be necessarily less than he is because she is a part of him. So Eve for Milton and uh, arguably in the book of Genesis as that dimension. With that, I'll conclude for now. As always, if you have questions or comments, send me an email.